We're still talking about perspective of a leader, the big picture, what the leader should see or the leader's um, point of view or standpoint. For instance, if somebody comes my way uh, for counseling in the local assembly and the person is saying things that I know will ultimately damage the person's personality or future family or present home, I should address it immediately. That should be the first thing, no matter what my personal feelings are. The vision should be protected. Remember also God's will first, the vision, the assignment, my mission should be before me. Then, fourthly, the people that God sent me to. The people in the vision. A leader must consider the people in the vision. Remember, God first, or the sender, the vision, the mission, the people. Why is the people coming after God, the vision, and the mission? Because the people can make God bury you. People will come with all manner of sentiments. They will come with all manner of suggestions. And if you listen to the people before you listen to God, or you listen to the people before you listen to the vision, or you listen to the people before you listen to the mission, you will be buried alive. And you know what? They will blame you. Because that's what people do. In as much as the people in the vision must be considered, you must know when to consider them. Don't worry, as long as you have God in mind, the vision in mind, and your assignment in mind, the people will not be hurt. They may feel uncomfortable. They may feel you're pushy, but they'll be fine. God will take care of them. But consider them after you've considered the other three. It's very important. Because without them, there is no need for the vision. God sent you to the people that you are leading. Finally, yourself. The perspective of a leader. You come last. That doesn't mean you don't love yourself. It just means you're submitting your will to the will of God. You're submitting your will to the will of the vision, which will eventually bless you. Don't ever make your personal feelings or emotions override the vision. Don't get angry in church. Be because at that level or that moment, you're ignoring God that says anger lies in the bosom of fools. You're ignoring the vision of the church or wherever you find yourself you are ignoring your assignment and you are ignoring the people and you're putting yourself as god you're actually at that moment committing the sin of idolatry you're worshiping yourself and you want people to worship you the sender and the vision the mission and others come first if you get this right then your leadership will be effective don't be sentimental the fact that somebody offended you and it's now time for you to judge between the person and somebody else don't tell yourself this is the time I'm going to get back at this person because the person insulted me before. No, that is not a heart of a leader. That is not supposed to be your perspective. Another thing you need to understand is everybody is growing. Like I said, the perspective of a leader is not the perspective of other people. A leader does not magnify the present. He magnifies 
the future. Just as you are doing the vision, remember also that there are some people that seem as if they are useless today. They will become useful tomorrow. A leader must be able to discern who is going to be useful. A leader does not see somebody and take the person, you know, from face value. What you see the person do. And you just feel, mm, this person cannot be useful. See the way the person is dressed. You never can tell. That person may eventually be your assistant in future. That's why a leader is different from every other person. A leader sees potentials. A leader sees into the spirit to see what God has called other people to do. Some people are going to be so dirty when they come to you. It's your duty to clean them up and make them who God wants them to be because you are a leader.